Hello students, in this video we'll see several applications of the Cauchy Condensation Theorem. Here's our first example. Let's show that the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n to the p converges if, and only if, p is bigger than 1. Okay? And so what we'll do is we use Cauchy Condensation. So of course, 1 over n to the p is a decreasing sequence of non-negative numbers. 1 over n to the p is a decreasing sequence of non-negatives. And so this condition over here allows us to use Cauchy condensation. So by Cauchy condensation, the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power p converges if and only if the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 to the power n, 1 over 2 to the power n to the power p converges. In other words, we replace all of the n's with 2 to the power n's. Okay? Now we see that what will this look like? Well, this is going to be exactly, I have a 2 to the n p minus 1, right? So this is exactly the series. So we have this series over here n goes from 1 to infinity of what? Of 1 half, and then we're going to have 1 half to the n to the p minus 1, okay? That's going to be our series. Now, I need this number over here, so we can rewrite this, of course, in the following way. We can write this as the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 half to the p minus 1 raised to the nth power over here. And we see that we want this number over here in the parentheses to be less than 1 in absolute value. So this number over here will be less than 1 if and only if. So this is going to converge, converges, if and only if this number over here is a non-negative number, right? So I need p to be bigger than 1. And so that gives us our p-test, right? So this is called the p-test for convergence, right? So the p-test follows in Cauchy condensation. Now Cauchy gives us a lot of other beautiful results. Let's look at another example. Example. Let's show, let's determine, we can use Cauchy to determine this as well, determine when the sum n goes from, I'm going to put a large number over here just so that the logarithm doesn't get screwed up. I'm just going to say 10. This, it doesn't really matter where we start the series. We only care about the tail behavior. 10 to infinity of 1 over n, and then I'm going to put the natural log of n to the power p over here. And you can see I could probably put a 2 over here if I wanted to. I'm just putting 10 for the sake of uh, make sure I don't make any mistakes with the sign of the logarithm. We definitely don't, don't want to put 1 in there because I had the log of 0. I had the log of 1, which is 0. I don't want that in our problem. So determine when this converges. Okay. Again, we're in a position to use Cauchy condensation because 1 over n natural log of n to the power p is a non negative sequence, is non negative and decreasing. That just follows from the fact that the denominator is an increasing function, so when I reciprocate it, it becomes a decreasing sequence. Okay? So our series converges, converges if and only if. I'm going to replace all the n's with 2 to the power n. The sum n goes from, we can say 10, doesn't matter. Again, the starting point's irrelevant. 2 to the power n, and then I'm going to do a 1 over 2 to the power n for that n. And I'm going to have a log of n, 2 to the power n, raised to the p power. Okay? Now, this is beautiful because you can see the power of Cauchy. The 2 to the power n, the dyadic powers cancel out. And you're just left with this log base 2 to the power n. I can pull that n out of the logarithm. So this is going to be what? This is going to be the sum. n goes from 10 to infinity of what? Of 1 over n to the power p, and then the log of 2 to the power p. And now we can apply the previous as well. This converges if and only if, this is less than infinity, if and only if p is bigger than 1, strictly bigger than 1. So in other words, this series over here, 1 over n log n to the power p will converge if and only if p is bigger than 1. And so we see from these two examples that the real power of the Cauchy condensation test, it will turn these power laws into a geometric series that will turn single, it will turn logarithms back into powers. So whenever there's a problem that involves a series with lots of logarithms, feel free to use the Cauchy condensation test because it'll take some of those logarithms and basically turn them either into powers or fewer iterations of logarithms. Thank you very much.